I think that what the probably the bigger question or what it sounds like from yeah, the actor is more about the feedback and not right. getting feedback and like feeling like you're just sending things into a void and then and or that's going to go on or yeah, yeah yeah what's going to happen it's like well I didn't hear anything which again speaks to this different time that we're in right because like when you would come in in person at least you saw a person like you saw a human being. Mm -hmm. If you didn't hear something, yeah. you kind of just so, knew. Well, now they all said, the actors would say like, oh, I'm looking forward to the days of coming in and just reading the room and knowing I didn't get the job. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We're yeah. thrilled to have you. You were each nominated for the coveted, I said it right, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yes. Fabulous. Artios Award. Artios. This year, given for outstanding casting for your work on Broadway. Bernie, you're nominated for The Music Man, Erica Hart for Chicken and Biscuits, Erica Jensen for, for Colored Girls. What made these particular projects so special for each of you? Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll start. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Um, I think for me, Broadway is very new for me. I'm the new kid on the block. Uh, this is my second year on the on the Broadway. Um, and Chicken and Biscuits was the first call. You know, um, it wasn't my Broadway debut technically. Passover uh, debuted first, so that was technically my Broadway debut. But Chicken and Biscuits was the first call. And uh, talking to Douglas Lyons and Jalen Livingston, they were very, very adamant on giving opportunity. And I was like, y'all. I've never done this before. Um, but they were like, no, this is what we want. We want fresh faces. We want fresh voices and, and fresh um, perspectives. And the fact that this play, Chicken and Biscuits, was a vehicle for three black women of a certain age to go on stage and share joy and excellence. It's like, sign me up. Sign me up. That's beautiful. <laughs> Erica, for you. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, for Colored Girls, I uh, had a bit of an um, attachment to it as um, I was an actor in college. And I, um, I uh, was <coughs> in a production, my college production of For Colored Girls. So when it came around, when, when I was asked to do it, I fought really hard to, um, to get it um, because I felt, you know, I had an emotional connection to it. And um, when I heard about Camille A. Brown's um, vision for it um, as, you know, primarily a choreographer and um, the dance that she um, was going to incorporate, um, I thought that was a really great challenge as a casting director to find, um, essentially, um, we wanted, you know, we wanted triple threads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was, um, um, and that language is just so beautiful and, um, specific and so it was such a um uh it was just a wonderful um way for me to um meet more actors and see more people um, um and it was you know during the height of covid so a lot of it was online um at first and then we went in person and the first time we were in person was the first audition was like everybody was crying you know mm -hmm. we were all just in tears and the actors everybody was just um so it was just a really kind of magical experience to be in that room with so many black women and um, uh, and a producing team that was really supportive and let Camille just cast however she wanted, which was also really liberating, not having to like do um, what we call stunt casting, you know, not having to find celebrities to do it. It was really fantastic. And also getting to work with Heidi Griffiths from the public was mm -hmm. amazing. So it was just wonderful all around. I love that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. for you with the music man. Yeah, when you asked the question, what was memorable, yeah. I would say the first thing was, I would answer is that it got up. <laughs> because mm. uh, it feels like we've been working on music man for five years on and off. I mean, there was a bunch of workshops, because you know, even you Jackman likes to do a workshop of a musical. Uh, so over the course, even before there was such a thing as COVID, we were doing labs and workshops. And you know, sometimes it was just a dance workshop. And then it was, you know, about 70% 75% cast before the shutdown because it was supposed to start rehearsals, uh, you know, like in a week or maybe two weeks later. And, uh, and then the whole thing fell apart. And then, you know, like everyone, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? A producer change happened. So then it really was not going to happen because there was now no producer. 
you know, which you would think would happen. It's got you Jackman in it. But, you know, everything just took so much time. Mm -hmm. And so the sad part was so many of the, you know, I don't know whoever saw it, but there's like 25 children in it, mm -hmm. you know, which God bless, bigger cast than, you know, normal, it normally gets to get done. So that was exciting. But we had to replace so many of the kids because they outgrew. Well, they aged out. Uh, you know, which was heartbreaking. Uh, so, you know, to have to go back into the amount of kid auditions that all dance, as you might may have seen, and that was at a time when you were doing it on Zoom. Wow. Uh, so it was, the fact that it got up was a miracle. Because <laughs> so. didn't you have 21 but, Broadway debuts? Yeah, yeah. Which that was so, and that's not just the kids. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Uh, which was really exciting. And, you know, we don't get to see the big shows, you know, because it's so financially... And that was the joy of having somebody like you, Jackman, mm. leading the way. They could afford to really do it the way they wanted to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, these were three big shows. These are the first shows in, you know, after the pandemic. So my first question is, how has the casting process changed since the pandemic? <laughs> oh, God. <Yep. laughs> what changed? <Yeah. laughs> no changes. No changes. No notes. It's um, so much of it is online, you know, mm -hmm. um, even with um, with theater, um, mm -hmm. we're still doing I don't know if you if your offices are doing the same thing, but we tend to have a process now of um, having like a first round mm -hmm. of auditions um, on tape and then our callbacks are have resumed in person um, and callbacks come from those tapes. And so it's a lot of tapes. It's a lot of, of requesting tapes. And in some respects, for me, um, I have found it beneficial to be able to um, have the time to see more people on tape. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you, when you have a limited, when you're doing auditions and you have a limited amount of um, space and time, um, seeing in person um, auditions um, um, for like say a first round um, or first audition, it's, it, it's limiting. It can be very limiting, but then, but this has opened it up a bit. And I mean, I think there's pros and cons to, to all of it, but that's, Pretty much how it's working, yeah. at least in, for us. I mean, there's definitely pros and cons, but yeah. then I always have to sit back and go, there's pros and cons about the restaurant you went to. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. you, you know what I mean? But you have to, what am I trying to say? But the long as we don't stay the way we were doing it nine months ago, mm. you know what I mean? Like, right. the great thing is, is to include this process of, I mean, we always had self-tapes before the pandemic, but mm -hmm. to include the process of casting online, if we just want to abbreviate it to that, but that it doesn't become the only right. way, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because the, the, it's great, we get to see so many more people, we get to include many more people, so those are all the pluses. I find the challenging is how we then work with our creative teams, because yeah. Yeah. we all know people are better in the room, mm -hmm. you get a sense of who the human is yeah. that you don't get on the tape. Right. And I feel like part of my job now is constantly reminding that Mm -hmm. of the team that you don't want to fall into the convenience and the accessibility cuts out what we call direction, right? And, Hello. you know, those things that we personally, especially coming from the theater, we always did pre-screens in person, mm -hmm. like, because you had to. Right. So we're all trained and used to giving adjustments. I'm not calling myself a director, but as a casting director, we're giving adjustments, mm -hmm. we're helping people, you know, make the best tape possible. And that process isn't necessarily happening. Mm -hmm. We know how to see past that. Right. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? But our teams don't. So that's been a challenge of how we get them to not try to cast the job from the tape we send them. Mm -hmm. Just see who you want to meet in person or on Zoom. Yeah. Like, because the more you do it, people get into just the result and trying to, you know, and it's so. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that you're telling, do you find that you're telling your, your teams, like, no, this person's actually. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I do that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Like, always like, no, I, I think we're overlooking this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And those are the dialogues that we loved and enjoyed having in the room yes. that we're trying mm -hmm. to incorporate, even in the like, I'm not going to send you this tape 
I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to talk to you before I send yeah, this tape. Right. Yeah, that's right. You, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get into There's this. even more psychology now than yes. Yes. before. Yes. Right. Um, cause yeah. what I've been saying to a lot of budding casting directors is like, take a psychology class. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's a lot, it's a lot of talking to the creative team and trying to figure out what line to go over, what line to touch. Mm -hmm. And I think during this time specifically was just a, rebirth of like, oh, right. There are things that we took advantage of mm -hmm. when you know we were in the room. But then there are pros and cons to both things. I think the thing that I remember was the first time I had to do callbacks for Chicken and Biscuits, mm -hmm. because that was the first time being a lot of actors coming in and saying, like, whoa, I haven't done this in two mm -hmm. years. And me hadn't packed an audition bag in two years. So I was on the phone with a fellow casting director be like, OK, so I have the camera. I have the sides. Am I missing anything? <laughs> um, because right. I hadn't uh, the muscle memory wasn't there. Um, um, so that was really fun to just try to figure out what does that mean to set up a room mm -hmm. and all that, plus the COVID officer and things. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think what Erica Jensen said was perfect about the amount of time now that we have to meet new actors, um, because time was that construct. But now we have the ability to see self-tapes at, I don't know, maybe 3 a.m. this morning when I couldn't sleep. That's right. Yeah. Um, right. Couldn't do that. Yeah. No one's coming in at 3 a.m. I hope. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, I think that that is that is a, a very big pro of this time is that I have met so many actors that I wouldn't have um, pre-pandemic because now I can see them on my t telephone or my laptop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Let's talk about the importance of diverse casting and what that means to each of you personally, because a lot's changed over the past few years yeah. in a good way. Yeah. That was something wonderful that came out of the whole pandemic and everything else. Yeah, I think, you know, as a black woman, I am very excited about, you know, the changes that have started. And, you know, I say we are making a step, one step, not steps, one step in the right direction. I think what really needs to be talked about is, yes, diversity on stage and on screen is very important. But I think behind the stage, behind the curtain, behind the camera is even more important so that we do have those authentic stories and those stories that you might not even think that should be told are being told. So that's why, again, when, oh, thank you. Um, so I think that was very important when I got to work on Chicken and Biscuits, when I got to work uh, with Antoinette and Danya on Passover. You know, these, these storytellers, these makers, like we were talking about before, having this time, this opportunity to share uh, their stories with multiple people. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's what needs to happen, what needed to happen, what needs to happen, and what will happen. Um, so I'm just really excited to be a part of it um, and to have the opportunity to share my story and, you know, see others have that opportunity through bringing them into cast and being like, whoa, you saw me in this way. I never thought I would be in this, let alone be considered for this. Um, so I think that's what's what's beautiful and what's happening. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. hey, Erica. Oh, yeah. um, so um, uh, I started uh, as a casting director 20 something years ago. <laughs> and so have a very um, a strong memory of, of how things were. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this has been a really wonderful time in making the step, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have a long way to go and we have to continue, but we are, um, uh, the conversations are changing and um, are more intentional and thoughtful um, with our community um, right. as casting directors. And um, things that we never talked about before, you know, when I first started, there's, there's so many conversations we're having now. Um, and so much support and, um, again, intention, uh, intentionality and thoughtfulness behind um, what all our work and what we're doing. Um, and I'm working with more people now that I, than I, you know, people, um, uh, all kinds of people, people that I, you know, that I didn't work with before. Um, and so this has been a wonderful, a, a better time, I'll say. Um, I'm noticing um, a lot more changes that are very positive and, um, the conversations that like I'm having with my creative teams um, around the about thing. this, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's been big. Um, and noticing, for example, working on um, Love Life on for HBO Max, the second season of Love Life, and the the um, the intention, the very intentional um, uh, showrunners that were put in place for that show for the second season, um, and having those conversations with them and. Um, 
uh, and um, and then you know just the work that we've been been doing um, on Broadway, for example. Um, I mean, all the work we're doing, but um, a lot of you know my office uh, with um, like Thoughts of a Colored Man was one of the first shows that mm -hmm. came out yeah. after the pandemic, and that was such a amazing uh, moment for us, a, a show that we'd been working on for years. Yep. That had been, and I don't know that it would have, um, because I don't know that it would have had the opportunity to have moved to Broadway had we not had this, um, had this moment, you know, had, uh, had not um, the things that occurred, um, occurred uh, before, um, like during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that show would have been something I don't know that that would have been a show that people would have considered right. um, mm -hmm. to to move to Broadway, and um, yeah, so that was a, such a that was a big deal. And you know, like you said, it's it's a more universal conversation. I mean, I've been casting a long time, and I'll never forget. You know, like on the first week of being a casting assistant when I was twenty one for Meg Simon, who you know was a premier stage yeah. and film and casting yeah, yeah, director. Yeah. You know, and she came from Joe Papp. You know, diversity. It, and I get the difference now, but it was spoke about then. I mean, it was, you know, the biggest lesson I learned was like, who, as a casting director, why wouldn't you want to play with a crayon box of 64 colors than 32 colors? You know, we all had those boxes when we were little kids. And Joe Papp was always about that. So as casting directors, like, we only knew to do that, but we were siloed or we were by ourselves or the conversations weren't happening. Mm -hmm. So yes, I could look back at the times when I, you know, might have brought in the same people that I brought in for rent for seven other projects, but they just weren't chosen. Now I understand why they weren't chosen because it wasn't universally discussed mm. like it might have with, say, Michael Greif. And now the conversations are at the forefront because of everything that went down three years ago. And I'm learning that the teams want us to come to the table with that information that they don't have. Whereas in the past, I would sit there with, you know, you know, uh, creative teams who are primarily white on a, on a project. Everybody understood that we need to have people of color in this project, but it wasn't talked about. And I think we all comfortably felt like, or people felt like if there was one or two people, the job was done. And it, mm -hmm. it so was mm -hmm. not done. Right. And nobody was wrong, you know what I mean? They just didn't understand what has been taught now or been shared now, mm -hmm. even if, you know, as white people, we're so behind the ape, you know, behind uh, my colleagues here. And now it's like even our junior staff members, like we all have these sessions and we have our EDI specialist that helps us. And like we openly have this conversation with our creative teams on day one as opposed to the day that all the names are on the board and we're about to cast and pick because mm. it's too late then. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? Because then it's like you're going with who's the best person or who your favorite is. And mm -hmm. now we have those conversations of what does it mean to you, this role? Mm -hmm. You know, we're still here to serve them. I'm not going to challenge them, but I'm going to ask the questions of why is that person of that ethnicity? Could it be this? Have you thought of this? And they're not, they're so open to it now. Mm -hmm. They want to be uh, informed, educated, seen, uh, and it's long as we remember to build in those times. And now we've just, you know, something that someone advised us is like, because mm -hmm. they're always, you know, it's every, everyone's always a rush. It's like, got the phone call today, like, can you start on Monday? It's like, <laughs> I'd like to have a meeting with everyone who's gonna have casting approval prior to doing it. Because mm -hmm. I want all of, you know, because it's all so spread out, mm -hmm. the people we work with. And it's too late to wait to the end about why that person should not be what it is or what it could be. And that's been healthy. And I'm learning like they are, but they know we know a little bit more, not that we're, we are a little bit more informed because that's the task of what we're being asked to do. Okay. And it's been healthy to have those conversations. Yeah. And I, wanna, I think audiences sorry. want to see themselves, right? You want yeah, to see yeah. someone who looks and feels like you. You can clap. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you watch a TV show and people say, I don't see myself up there. I go to this film, I don't see myself there. Mm -hmm. And I think there's been a lot more of that now where people be like, oh, that's me up there. Yeah. Right. You know, that's me on that show. I think, you know, audiences help that along, I think, a bit yeah. too with TV yeah. and film. If I can, I wanted yeah. to just yeah. add on to something that um, Erica Hart said um, the um, about the. Um, uh, about behind the scenes, like yeah. you know yeah. who who we have behind the table. When I started, I was the only 
person of color, I yes. think, in the rooms, like yes. in, you know, with um, with Bernie and like our meetings, like we'd have these big casting meetings and I was very aware that I was the only like black person in the room. And now, you know, we have, you know, now like Erica's here and Destiny mm -hmm. and Sujata and mm -hmm. Portia and Victor Vasquez and, mm -hmm. you know, so our, our ranks are also expanding in that way as yeah. well. Like we're, we have more. It's great. Yeah, we there's more diversity um, amongst casting directors too, which has been. Uh, I didn't realize how lonely I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, so. I mean it, it's it's yeah. true. It's true. And you know, like if if Jensen's not in the meeting, if Destiny Lily's not in the meeting, and it's just me, I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. What questions am I gonna have to answer today? <laughs> um, uh, so no, but I think it's been it's been really lovely just to see the community yeah. that we have formed and that is growing because, like, when I say behind the table, behind the camera behind the curtain, I don't just mean the casting director. Right. I mean the casting intern. Right. I mean the casting assistant. I mean the associate, uh, the, the casting, the assistant casting director because... The pipeline. The pipeline. Yeah. Because, you know, as people move up, you want to see that you're not the only one moving up, that you right. have someone behind you who's moving along with you. Right. Um, so they, I think it's very important to, to think, you know, like, who's your assistant costume designer? Who's your key grip? Who's your, you know, best person yeah. on, the, <laughs> best boy, best, you know, whatever that, that term is on the film set? Who are these people? Because those are the people that in five, ten years are going to be the DPs, are going to be the directors. <laughs> so it's, it's very important to, yes, fill from the top, but also film from the bottom so that everybody as you said, is represented. That's beautiful. You know, you started to talk about the self-tape, so let's talk about the self-tape. Let's talk about them. <laughs> I know a lot of actors, including award-winning actors who I've spoken to, who get so stressed by the self-tape. Like, <laughs> how much time do I put in? What do I do? Is my lighting perfect, right? You all go through the same thing, right? <laughs> is my background, am I, what, what to do? So, yeah. what do you each look for in a great self-tape? Um, you know, I think here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> we need to hear you and we need to see you. Yeah. Bare bones, bare minimum, as the children are saying. You know what I'm talking about? Um, we need to hear you and we need to see you. So everything else is a bonus. I never want to say you have to do something because when I say have to, cha-ching starts going off. And people think that because I have to, it means I have to buy. Mm -hmm. um, I think technically, again, here you need to see you. If you want to get a backdrop, that's fine. Clean blank background, that works for me. Set up some lights. You don't need a ring light, but if you have one, great. But again, I need to see you. I see a lot of self-tapes that come across my desk. I'm like, are you in a cave? Um, uh, that's not going to work. Yeah. Put on a light, you know? Um, I need to hear you, so maybe you don't film it outside when the trash truck is rolling by. Um, that ain't going to work. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, just the basics. But I think when it comes to performance, it's been really interesting to see, as someone who is new to um, casting Broadway and, and theater in and of itself, it's really interesting to see the mediums mix. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, so this is on stage, but we're looking at it on screen, but you know, all of that stuff. So I think for self-tapes in particular, when it comes to performance, always think of the fact that you need to grab somebody in the first 10 seconds. Yeah, whatever that may be. And you're like, well, Erica, I don't have the first line. Great, how are you listening? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing for me is how are you reacting to the acting that is happening? Um, so you have to catch us in the first 10 seconds because the people who have that final say, the people who we're sending it off to, um, they might have a location scout to go to that day. They might have a makeup consultant to go to that day. They might have, you know, a meeting with the general manager. All of this stuff that they're watching we, it on the van. They're to the watching location. it on the van to go. You know, so they might have five characters and a link of fifty people to watch that they have to watch in ten minutes. Right. So if you don't catch them in the first ten seconds, it's not that they don't want to watch your full tape. They just can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so catching us in the first ten seconds, I think, is is something to always keep in the back of your mind. At the end of your work, I think if you're done with your self tape and you're ready to send it off, always ask the question of Will they get this self tape, this performance, anywhere else in the world? If the answer is no, good, go to sleep, night night. If the answer is yes, maybe try to do it again. 
Yeah, because we're seeing many, many, many a self tape, but there's only one you. And at the end of the day, only one person's going to get it. So we want to see who you are through any audition, self tape, in person, et cetera, et cetera. It's very important to put whatever yourness is through that so that we can know who you are through your audition. Yeah. You said all the things said I was going to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you want. I'd add a half a thing. I mean, because literally she said all the things that were in, in, in my mind. But the big thing which she said about listening, mm -hmm. and I know we know that as actors, but on that tape, listening doesn't mean, oh, it's not my line, so I could look down on my next right. line. <laughs> and yes, when you're doing a theater audition or in a person room audition, sure, uh, you're looking at the sides and you're looking down, but you're not dropping out because I still see your toes all mm -hmm. to your forehead and you're in the room and we're all present. But you know, when you're on a screen this big, the minute I go like that, I've left the room. <laughs> so if I've left the room, he or she in the van has left the room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just so, it, it really is like, allow us to watch you listening. Mm. So it's different than just in, you know, the normal acting thing that you're always supposed to do that mm -hmm. you're, you know, about listening. But we want to watch you listen because mm -hmm. those are the greatest moments on film and TV anyway when you see the close up. You know, and they're like, oh my God, Meryl's not even speaking. And like, right. I'm, totally <laughs> right. I'm totally in it. Yeah. Right. And that's help the people who are watching the self tape stay in it. And that's what she also means by the, the 10 seconds. You know, because it's, and you have to just look at it like that's the gig. Sure, that's not why you went to acting school. I'm a much, I'm an actor. That's how you're getting to, you know, just like the days you eat the sandwich on the run in the subway versus <laughs> like you went to a restaurant and you spent an hour. Like there are times that the auditions are just going to be like that. Mm -hmm. But like Erica said, someone's going to get it. Yeah. So we all can talk about the process sucks, but someone's getting it. So why not <laughs> it be you? Right. And why not you do the best you can do? I always, well, whether it's a self tape or not, you have to just think of like every audition, if you are one who cares, is like the blind date that you're going on. Mm -hmm. Like everyone in this room, whether you're into clothes, not into clothes, have money, don't have money, whatever it is, you're thinking about your best self when you go on that blind date. Hopefully you are. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and that's the kind of energy that should go into, without the anxiety of the, of the blind date, but that's the kind of like my best self in this two minutes or this eight minutes or whatever it is I'm going to present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's a, yeah. that's a good one. I like that. I love the blind date. I love the blind date. I love the blind date. I've been using it. Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, if we want to talk about my bad blind date story. <laughs> I mean, luckily she did marry me, but I went on about it. Uh, but, uh, yes. I'll just do it quickly. On, because this is, this is probably where I got it. We went on a blind date, and I'm, like, going on a blind date. And, like, at the time, I was a vegetarian. And uh, so, like, I picked this really nice vegetarian restaurant, and we go to the blind date. And first thing, she's looking at the menu, and she's like, oh, it's so weird. They don't have any steak on this menu. <laughs> and, and I said because we're at a, a vegetarian restaurant. Next word, why? <laughs> and I'm like, because I'm a vegetarian. Why? <laughs> Second day, we went to Raul's, and I started eating steak. <laughs> I love that. So 30 that's years so later, sweet. we're still together. All right, anyway, that's that. So. <laughs> no, but the other thing is, no one has to, I, I tell people this all the time, even doing interviews, no one has to know what has happened before. Before you walk in right. that room, no one has to know what happened, or before they see a finished interview, no one has to know the chaos yeah. of getting someone or whatever. All anybody sees is finished product. Yeah. Like when you walk through that room, no one realizes that you waited for four trains. Yeah. They don't care what you waited for four trains, but right, you know, it's like yeah. walk in there yeah. presenting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Right? Unless you can use it. Yeah, unless, unless you can unless, use the chaos unless, and unless the thing it's like okay this scene's chaos i came from chaos here comes chaos <laughs> right <laughs> well let's talk about the difference of putting together a self-tape for a theater role and putting together a self-tape for a film or tv role because mm -hmm. actors have said the same thing to me because mm -hmm. when you you know let's get into that what's the difference for all of you with a self-tape mm -hmm. should you project more i mean what is the difference I want to hear from you two yeah. because I have, I feel like I watch, well, I watch a lot of uh, theater audition tapes and, uh, huh. yeah. you know, I think that, you know, my advice always is to, um, is to do the tape the way you would if you walked into the room. Mm. If you, um, and because you're not actually doing as much as you think 
Um, and it, you, it's, it's tricky. Um, I, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm able to, to discern, you know, um, how an actor mm -hmm. is, and, and if you're making choices and you're connecting and you're talking to your reader, right. um, that's all I really want. Um, uh, and so, but that's not great. That's not good, like, super helpful advice, I don't think. I'm not I sure. I think for me, I mean, I think <laughs> this, yeah, I uh, please disagree with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like standing up yeah. does a lot. Yeah, yeah. standing yeah. up. I think for helps. theater, I think yeah. for theater auditions, yeah. the moment, I don't know why, unless, you know, you're at the kitchen counter, I don't know, but I just feel like standing up yeah. for theater auditions does something already yeah. because I think the moment you sit in a chair and this goes with a lot of auditions but the moment you sit in the chair the energy just goes into yeah. the chair yeah. and I just feel like with theater it's so physical most of the time it's yeah. so in your body mm -hmm. and the moment you sit down your body is at rest and it's not engaged and it's not turned on so I just feel like bringing that up just brings an energy yeah. Yeah. innately I that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I don't think you need to move around. No, stage no, it you don't like need you to would. give me a pas de deux. Uh, like, I know. No. Like you no, would in the room. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. There would be a lot of but, staging. Right, right. right. Like, no. I, don't, I don't, yeah, you don't have to do a lot of staging, but, yeah. but, do, but your energy being more up, for sure. Yeah. And actors have asked me if they should like frame themselves differently, and sure, yeah. Um, you can give yourself a little bit more space if that's comfortable for you. Um, if there's an activity, then you can do the activity, but it, yeah. again, you don't have to block the whole thing. It shouldn't be a lot different from how you would go into an audition right. in person. Because you're, um, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would not ask you to please bring in tons of props the same way that yeah. I would not ask you to do, like in person, the same way I would not ask you to do that on a self tape. Um, and, um, uh, yeah. So anyway, Bernie, yeah. You no, no. I was going to say the only thing I would uh, yeah. when you just said I wouldn't do anything different than I would do in the room. The only thing I would say, I, maybe I would add, that would be different is whether you have a live reader in the room, or, mm -hmm. or well, hopefully you have a live reader in the room if you're doing a play audition. <laughs> but is that you're still playing to the camera? Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas yeah. obviously, if we were in the, this was our audition room, you know you would still see, if I'm the actor, you would still see me if I was playing to the reader. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas now if we're gonna watch a tape for 10 minutes and I'm doing it to the reader, then you're like you're not allowing us yeah. in. You know what I mean? So put the reader closer to the camera. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't look away if you're playing the scene, but mm -hmm. yeah. you know, even though you're acting as if you're doing a, a, a stage audition, mm -hmm. you still I are. Yeah. Yeah. Doing that's it for that's the, the trick, but that's the yeah. tricky part. Yeah. yeah. You know, and right. that's what I was saying earlier. It's like the mediums are coming together as yeah. one. So you want to right. So right. So so stage. So right. So positioning, keeping mm -hmm. the technical aspects in um, in mind for mm -hmm. what you're doing, um, and then um, but then you know doing the acting. <laughs> <laughs> Acting. That you should be doing, making choices mm. and talking to your reader, and but making sure the reader is next to the camera. You know, and, you're, and I know these are, it, yeah. it's tough times and they're hard, but it's like, there's got to be ways to also make it fun for you. Yeah. You know, like yeah. everybody yeah. has actor friends, you know, so much better to have, mm -hmm. you know, an actor read than your partner, spouse, yes. child, but you know, who's not an actor. Right. You, you know what I mean? For the same reason you've walked out of the room and went, oh, I went to so-and-so's room for an audition today and they didn't have an actor being a reader. Right. You know, you all remember those days when you have a wonderful reader who's an actor, yeah. mm -hmm. but somehow you have forgotten that when you're making your self-tape. Right. Like, mm. you, you know what I mean? Just like, yeah. get an actor in the room and, yeah. you know, and, and do it. And, uh, oh, and can I know something just about like time? You know, because we're all close with actors, and I know there's a lot of time that goes into the self tapes. Which thank you so much for all of the work that you all are doing. I think it goes without set, without saying, is that you all are doing a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, just putting on one self tape is a, in New York City, let alone is a lot of work. So thank you so much for doing all of the stuff that you have been doing. I think to remember though, when you when we were going into the rooms, or when we do have callbacks for theater and things like that, you have about seven and a half minutes to about 15 minutes in that room. So I know a lot of people are spending hours yes. and hours yes. and hours on one scene. Mm -hmm. Just realize when we do go back to the in-person fully, you know, maybe hybrid of it all, you won't have that hour, you know? So I think maybe if you have time, because time is precious, set up your room, set up your self-tape situation, step away, 
five minutes, <laughs> then come back, set that timer. I have 30 minutes to do this. Maybe you got 15 minutes to do this. Mm -hmm. So that you can get back into that groove because I've heard from a lot of actors yes. who am I close with, they're like, oh God. And who've been auditioning for years, decades even. They're just like, that was different. That was scary. Like you're in a room with energy that you haven't been in for years. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, definitely spend the time. I just don't want people to get used to the hours and hours of m moments yes. doing two pages of a scene. Because right. you're, you're not gonna get that in the room. You don't get that. And you're not going to get that on set. <laughs> you know, see, I love that because, like I said, people said, oh, I've done like 92 takes. And yeah. These are, these are yeah. Yeah, award yeah, yeah. winning actors and actresses yeah. who are yeah. like, and I look and I cry. And I yeah. show it to my husband. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, let's have dinner and then we'll go back and do it again. But right. yeah. you wouldn't get that in a room. You're not no, going to get that no, in the room. No. And I think you have to also be the editor and only send one of that take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Unless it was a conversation that yeah. you had because you had that relationship with that casting person and they, you know, and, and they said, oh, send me the two and then I'll send the, mm -hmm. the one. You know, I mean, obviously but that's I'm like getting any adjustment. I'm not mad at two, unless, unless they're different, completely different, right? Um, I'm not mad at the two just in case you don't know, or just in case it's like, oh, okay, that was okay. I would say if it's 14 pages, maybe no. just send the one. Yeah, <laughs> or, or you know? no, you're absolutely right, or but but send the one you love most first, because yes. you have no yes. idea who's watching, and yes. they might have only watched one. Yeah. You know, but, but you're I'm right. Not, I'm I don't not mind, mad at two. I'm I don't mind multiple, two. I don't mind, and we're talking about theater, however, um, I don't mind multiple tapes on like, a post-star role. No. no. Yes. One line. Yeah, where those with theater, shit. for me, like if, like right now, we're doing Hudson Valley Shakespeare, and those sides are so <laughs> yeah, they're so yes, yes. I love them. I love them, <laughs> and it's wonderful. The sides that they gave, though, mm -hmm. you know, because it's for the entire, you know, it's for like three plays. Yeah. It's like the 14, 15 pages of right. material, and so I don't have time to watch multiple takes of you know plays that have been done before. Yeah, you know, like you know how to do this. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you've seen this play. You know yeah. how to do this play. Um, so um, yeah, so um, I yeah, so I don't mind when it's a uh, when it's on TV and yeah. it's TV stuff. Yeah, but when it's theater, I prefer just the, the packet. When you have the packet, when you yeah. have the packet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you ask for like to send two takes, sometimes we'll, we're going to get to co-stars, but I want to go mm -hmm. back into yeah. the in-person audition, which is coming back, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You said callbacks, Bernie. The, yeah, and uh, we're doing yeah, a bunch of callbacks. Yeah. And yeah. we're doing a bunch of first times. Yeah. Oh, good. In person now. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good. I mean, how, how does that feel for the three of you? It must be so great because this is where you started. I mean, yeah. this is, you went into that the room, so you had great. your table. I mean, no. what does it feel like as casting? I mean, that, when I went for, I mean, the first time I had in person auditions, I saw you. That's yeah, yeah. when I saw yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and when I was just like, do I bring a bag? Yeah. Um, uh, so it's 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 just exciting, yeah. I think, to yeah. be in the room and exciting to see like the actors come in and be like, can I take my mask off? Mm -hmm. And then like people we haven't seen in two or yeah. three years, yeah. you know? But I think there's nothing better to be in the room when someone gets it and leaves the room and turn to your creative director or your creative person or I don't know why I can't, a director. Um, and uh, <laughs> you look over at them and they're like, that's my person, mm -hmm. you know? There's nothing There's nothing, nothing better, better yeah. than that, nothing better. you know? So that is what's missing, you know? Of course you get an email being like, here are my choices, blah, 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 but just to be in the room and just yeah. see people work, yeah. you know? Being in, in auditions with Death of the Salesman and seeing Miranda Cromwell work with each actor that came into the room, that was amazing and, and exciting to see. Um, because then you learn, because casting director, director, right? Um, so you learn how to direct from these directors that that give the time to the actors, um, so that's exciting. Yeah, to and it back. also helps us understand what What's they're, happening. What they're looking yeah. for <laughs> yeah. and what you know as we continue on this project. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. right? like I said, the in person is really great because you get a connection right away. Yeah. I mean, a director does, a casting director does. If they say change this, like oh my god, there was magic happening yeah. in that room. Yeah. Going back to the self tape, how do you know when you're sitting there watching, like you said, mm -hmm. hundreds or thousands of mm -hmm. these? You know, you're not getting that same kind of feeling. You're getting a feeling, probably. So how do you know from a self-tape, as opposed to being in an in-person room with someone saying, I love what I got, that mm -hmm. electric energy. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when you're watching 350 self-tapes mm -hmm. for that same role? How do you know, like, I'm choosing number six, let's send in number nine, we'll send in number 12. What is it? 
Well, part of it, I think, is just us knowing um, actors already, like, mm -hmm. you know, before. And, like, if we're meeting someone new, what I'm doing um, is going to resumes mm -hmm. and looking for other work that the actors have done as well. If I can find, you know, like, if I can see some other things that they've done, if I'm trying to get to know somebody, like, if it's a new person. Um, and, um, and I think that um, uh, mostly um, on tapes, um, I have been able to sort of get a, I, I do feel like I yeah. really get a, yeah. It's like watching yeah. television it's, and movies. Yeah. Like, I think it's yeah. still getting, it's we're still like, feeling something. Yeah, feel yeah. Something. yeah you know. I still feel something. I think that like, it's just like when, um, when I when I need more information, I can and I can get it. Then that's great. But but mostly, it's like you just get a feeling. You can just get that feeling because 100%. because you you know the person's working and they're and if they're making choices again and if they have an interpretation of the character that's coming through and who they are as a person is also coming through some you know, um, and um, yeah and that's in, and then that's really inspiring and then it's like oh I want to know that I want to know them more mm -hmm. and let's bring them in and let's get to know them let's see how they work with the director and. Um, and it, and it is really enlightening when um, going back into the room. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's been wonderful. Like I think, um, I think directors that I've been working with lately have been spending more time with like each and every person, even mm -hmm. if, even if there's a sense that they kind of know that it's not, they're not that this person isn't quite telling yes. the story that they are looking for. They're still working more with actors, and. You know, because they're also casting their next thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no. If anything, yeah. the teams yes. are spending much more time with actors yes. on Zoom than they did in the room. Yes. You yes. know, because, I, you know, I look at it because they're feeling exposed, right? They're right oh, there. Right. So it's easier to be human. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? As opposed to they're not, you know, the table, come in, thank you, leave. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's great for the actor because mm -hmm. I find these directors, you know, mm -hmm. spend 45 minutes with someone. You know, you know what I mean? Oh. Even if the minute they walked out, they were like, no, that's not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but like we, you know, right, I laugh and I'm like, why did we just do 45 minutes? And then I'm like, oh, how great we did 45 minutes. Yeah. Like they really had a shot. They yeah. had a shot. You know, you know what I mean? So that's a flip than say, yeah. with other teams we've all worked with, you know, you know what I mean, that it was in and out. So we might have a little less time with the people. I'm also finding that we're having to add time into, if we're watching the self tape, and now we are bringing them in for a director session, you know, we keep saying like today, it's a callback. It's really first time for the right, team. Right, it is first time, yeah. So I'm finding like, oh wait, we have to remember, it's not, I mean yes, we all call it a callback, but it's like, we're now needing to take the time. Yeah. Oh wait, I think we need a little Zoom time with them before we bring them in the room. Yes. So we could set up the room for them, tell them what, because we're forgetting that they don't even know what we liked of the self tape. Mm. You, you know, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. So like we just yeah. been having some staff meetings and going like, I think we need a like, or if we're partnering, mm -hmm. okay, Tiffany, I'll do the waiting room, you be with the director, you know, like, mm -hmm. so we could help a little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we realize they're still walking into this Zoom. Yes. Cold. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I mean? So that's an adjustment we're trying to just realize now we need yeah. to do. So let's say someone sends a self tape and they made choices, good choices, but they weren't the choices that maybe you or the director was looking for. Do you sometimes look beyond that and say, wow, I would like to work that's with this person, yeah. bring them yeah. in. Oh, or we'll have a little Zoom yeah, yeah, yeah. session. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because that's what people yeah. freak out about, like, oh my God, I, you know, I'm we're gonna get into, like, um, the one-liners and the co-star things, yeah, yeah. too, when you have one line, like, oh my God, you're not given a script. <laughs> right, you right. Know, you're sent a page that says, you know, the person is 25 or is 45, and she's going in for, you know, an audition to be an assistant, and here's the line. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, right. what do I do? So right. let's, let's get into that now. Let's just okay. get into the co-stars and, you know, what? Like, let's, let's <laughs> <laughs> Like, what, like, you know, like, co-stars, what? Yeah, you know, yeah, like, it's, it's, no, it's, yeah. it's, 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 you know, it's a thing. Yeah, no. it's a thing. You know, and it's I think thing. it's a huge it's thing. Huge, right? Because it's, it's, it's interesting to hear casting directors talk about, you know, going back into the world of in-person. You have some casting directors be like, okay, so when we do go back, I think I'm just gonna do, you know, guest stars and above. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, and, and, and have, you know, co-star self-tape. And then there are a lot of casting directors like, no, 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 no. That's what we need. Like, right. we need in person for that because 
they went that way. It's how do I how do I go? Like yeah. what am I supposed to say? Yeah. So I think that's that's what I meant by multiple takes because you could yeah. there's so many ways and in the classes that I teach I do a class just on one-liners um, just to be like you know and then even in some classes I have you say the first line three times mm -hmm. to see that there's so many ways to say one thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's 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 tricky um, because a lot of the time we don't know these actors, and right. since we can't see them in the room, we we don't meet them, we don't meet their see their energy and feel their energy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's why I'm leaning towards like send me if you have two three lines under fives, which you know commonly fifty words or less or five lines, send those two takes because mm -hmm. like you said, you get that one page that's barista number one and say, <laughs> would you like coffee? Yeah. It's you know like are you have you not slept that day are you pissed at this person asking you like you don't are you happy that you have this job just you know I you have to look at it like it's the most fun audition. I mean yeah, I know it's not yeah. but it's like yeah this should be the most fun audition and I'm gonna make up something yeah to like because you know you all brilliantly did that in acting school or not acting school or when you get cast in something you're doing the backstory you're deciding if they had a bad night's sleep a good night's sleep mm -hmm. all of that stuff needs to go in Rather than you look at it and go, oh, anyone can do this. Right. They don't want me. You know what I mean? I always tell the Annalee Ashford story. Please do. Yeah. See, you've heard it, I I'm guess. Bring this, this is great. You know, before she was Annalee Ashford, you know, when we first knew her and she was, you know, just in ensembles on Broadway, every movie I was casting that we brought her in for a one line, she got cast. Mm -hmm. And it was because of the choices she made. And I'll give the one little story with on the Sex and the City movie because that this is one that everybody knows who things are, but it was Carrie Bradshaw interviewing for a new assistant. Mm -hmm. And it was like a montage. Mm -hmm. There were like five one lines, and then it ends up, it's Jennifer Hudson. But you know, all you knew was Starbucks. Like that was on the one page, and I would bring it out still, like on the side, it said, at a Starbucks. And I, 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 now I'm like, I'm being, that's such an old man, I'm forgetting what the one line is. But, <laughs> uh, but she, you know, has a one line, but you all you know is that you're interviewing for Carrie Bradshaw to be an assistant. So it doesn't even matter what the one line is. But one after another, and we were doing them in person those days with Michael Patrick King, the writer director. And you know, people would walk in and do the one line, and it's like you have to remember with the co-stars, definitely on movies, maybe yeah. not so much on TV. Yeah. Those are the most imaginative ro uh, roles that these writer directors are writing, mm -hmm. right? They're writing this thing because they want that moment to move the story forward. Mm -hmm. So it might look like nothing on the page, but I've spent so many years with Michael Patrick King. Like he's got visions, you know, ideas, all of that stuff, whether he shared them or not. But they're vivid roles. That's like mm -hmm. just give yourself that permission to go. This is the most important role, more so than Carrie Bradshaw. <laughs> and actually it is, because it's moving the plot along yeah. for Sarah Jessica Parker's Carrie Bradshaw. So like, if you know that, and that's what I think Annalee like, would just do on her own. So these actors would come in all the time, but it's like, I'm doing the work for, this is what I believe Annalee Ashford did. I'm coming in to interview for a role of Carrie Bradshaw. Okay, you have to be like, none in this world to not know that Carrie Bradshaw is someone who is a fashion, mm -hmm. you know, diva, right? So I better wear something that is about an outfit because if this is true life, maybe you want Carrie Bradshaw to go, ooh, nice thing. Mm. So, I mean, the door opens and I open the door. There's Annalie, this, you know, the big white sunglasses are already up here. There's a, you know, it's a rain, there's a raincoat, but there's like, just like the way in, you know, Glass Onion you see, you know, 007 with the little scarf underneath his shirt, and I can't stop looking at the scarf. Like, she's got the blouse and the little scarf that's under the raincoat that all I want her to do is open the raincoat. Like, she hasn't even gotten in the room, and I'm like, open up the raincoat, and she fucking walks in with literally two lattes on a tray. <laughs> and it's like, like, oh my God, it doesn't say that in the script. And it's like, and she walked in, she did the line, and she just handed it to the reader. Like, she's handing a latte to Carrie Bradshaw. Like, I mean, like, it was just, you know, and Michael Patrick King was like, done. Right. Done. Right. Done. Right. Like, right. there was no resume. Right. It was like, done. And then the same thing she did for Jonathan Demi movie. I mean, it's just like, mm -hmm. she was playing a cashier at like a, you know, a low rent 7-Eleven. Yeah. You, you, know, you know what I mean? And it was like, you, you just, 
made a choice. Mm -hmm. Made a choice. And worst comes to worst, like you don't get cast because that's not what he or she was looking for. But like, Thank what a great know. night. However, she came up with that, and it wasn't shtick, mm -hmm. and it was it was grounded. You know, you know what I mean. And those are the kind of things of like. Mm -hmm you want to like do. Yeah. That's what makes those things fun. But anyway. Yeah. That's one of my favorite stories. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because you look at That's a good story. Like, when you say these one-liners are what move stories on TV and film alone. They're very, very important plot pieces. I mean, our teams yeah. are so difficult to get them to make decisions on these one-liners. Oh. Like that's how you have to realize they are important yes. roles. Yes. Like, cause again, they're moving that plot along and they have specifics, even though we all look at it and go, anyone can do this. How about you direct them to tell them what you want? Right. You know, like any of those women could have done what Anna Lee did if Michael told them, mm -hmm. but there's no time for that. That's what you have to look at is the joy of acting. Mm -hmm. What you are gonna bring to it is what's gonna make, again, the blind date, what's gonna make that person wanna spend more time with you. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you're right, oh, if you would've told me that, I would've done that. <laughs> you know, but like, right. you don't have that opportunity. No, but like you said, so. going back to acting school, that's the backstory you put together for any role you have yeah. done. This is all stuff you know, so you should do the same thing for a one-liner. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're human beings. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you have to put some life in it. Yeah. Um, I always say just, I say be a human being in the world. Be in yeah. the circumstances um, of the situation. And, um, you know, a lot of times on television, like those one-liners are mm -hmm. the barista, here's your coffee. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a lot of information. If you Even if you just have that one page, you know you're a barista. Yeah. You've all been to a coffee shop or whatever at some point, you know, um, and you know what that's like. So maybe, you know, you know that this person is getting, doing a job. Mm -hmm. And unless there's something in there that suggests otherwise, you know that you're good at your job. You know, so there's like, there's lots, so you do have like lots of, oh, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> so, you have, um, so you do have lots of information. Um, again, even if it doesn't, there, take the, what I, what I should say instead is, there is information there for you yeah. um, so that you can make some choices and some decisions. Mm -hmm. If you know where you're working, you know the time of day, you know that you, um, you know how a person who is a barista might dress, you can, you can make those decisions and then mm -hmm. you can craft the audition around that. So you don't need the whole script is what I'm saying. Yeah, because I, I would think now co-stars, that's where all the new people coming up get a shot, at least on television. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, that's when people break into TV a lot now, yeah. right now. Yeah. Is, is, are Definitely. The, new, the newbies are getting, yeah. you know, yeah. the co-star as opposed to a film, like, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but they're really important things to do and everybody should have a backstory. Yeah. Yeah. We're all, we're all coming through it, you know, so yeah. breathe some life into it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like Bernie said, it's, you know, the foundation, it's pushing the storyline. Yeah. I call it like the thread of the story. You know, it, you all know these people and it makes it relatable. We've all been in a cab before. We've been at a coffee shop before. So it, it brings a realism to, to the, the show that you're working on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've spoken to a lot of actors who said what I love about, what they love about auditioning, because I know a lot of people who auditioning freaks them out, like going, they don't know what's going to happen behind that door. Yeah. You know, but people say, at least today I get to act. They're like, <laughs> well, that's exactly and this right. is what they say. They said, you should, oh, I'm sure, go right ahead. Yeah. But I think if you turn your negatives around in whatever you do in your life, but I think as far as acting goes, if you're going in in person or if you're doing a self tape, just say, wow, I've got, wow, one line, or I've got five lines. I can act today and send it off to these people, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And I would also just on that note, this is, might not be the question, but. You know, and we all advocate, oh, just offer to he or she. Like, mm -hmm. they've done this, and now I'm talking maybe it's not the one line, it's the guest star. Huh. But you know what? We might know that there's everything you can do, but creative teams, they don't watch, they don't know as much. And I feel like, you know, sometimes it's the agents who are, who are getting in the way, but it's, I, I'm only bringing this up because of what Rich said, it's like, it's acting. I know auditions are frustrating and all of that and getting a job is hard, but you're in a business that chose to potentially have a job interview or an audition every day of your life that mm -hmm. architects don't have or right. doctors don't have. Mm -hmm. So make the most of it. And no one's being an a-hole by asking you to audition. You're right, you deserve to get that offer based on your body of work. But if you don't do it, right. someone else is gonna do it. Yeah. So either you have to find a way to be okay with auditioning and potentially getting rejected. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then you have a shot. And I think, I mean, we're talking about different levels of actors. I'm not saying Meryl Streep should audition, but 
<laughs> but, you know, there are times she should. No. <laughs> Just shoot me down. Uh, life's but, gonna fall. But, you know, I mean, we're talking at all different levels, but I find, you know, as much as I always am advocating for, like, make that person offer, look at this person's real, yeah. I, I actually can say today I understand, like, audition and that's yeah. you know you know what I mean or send the tape in so you don't have to come in the room and be rejected necessarily but I would just mm -hmm. it and find the joy in it that's what, like mm -hmm. I picked up from Rich it's like okay it's I'm acting for the day I'm gonna do this scene and especially you know? I think since I did a lot of sketch shows I think when I was sending out appointments you know they'd be like oh offer only mm -hmm. and I'm like well I know that they can be funny but their real doesn't a lick of anything right. funny, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's if it's something that you've never done before or a medium you've never done before, you and I would know that you're funny because, you know, we're out and I see that you're hilarious, but you have to let them know that yeah. you're funny. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your resume doesn't show that, your reel doesn't show that. Mm -hmm. um, so have, get, bring the joy back into what you love, mm -hmm. you know? Right, rather than, for, you know, another example would be like, Oh, I went in for that guest star on that television show right. three times now. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're right, but I get that's looking at it half empty. Mm -hmm. You know, half full is like, well, if they're asking you now again for the fourth episode, it's because mm -hmm. someone is liking you. Yes. Yeah. You know, and there's yeah. got to be a reason. Yes, it makes no sense, <laughs> right. but there are different directors, there are different writers in every one of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, our teams are changing left and right on these yeah. film and TV. So it's like, whenever there's a, a you know, I'm sure there's a time where you can pick out, okay, that makes no sense. But most of the time, there is reason behind it. Right. Yeah. And rather than look at it as a bad thing, try to find the, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, okay, well, they keep bringing me back for another guest star because someone in that room likes me. Yeah. So let yeah. me try again. There's so many victories you know? that yeah. you all might not notice or might not right. think about. And I think, of course, the victory is the booking, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the booking. It's the, it's the coin, you know? Like, it's the thing. But I think the journey getting there, there's so many victories along the way. Even getting an audition, period, yes. is a victory. I got, yes. Yes. yes, yes. Because the truth of the matter is, I I'm, I'm I just put out a a, a, um, a breakdown yesterday for a two line role. I got over fifteen hundred submissions from that, right? And that's a two line role, right? Um, I'm not bringing in fifteen hundred people, right? Or I, I'm requesting fifteen hundred people. I'm requesting a small, 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 small percentage of that less than 5% of that. So you're in that less less than 5%. That is a huge victory. Every step along the way, if you get pinned, mm -hmm. uh, if you get feedback, you know, saying like, hey, can you redo this? Um, if, if you get a call back, if, uh, you know, whatever, if there's interest, whatever it is, that is a victory. Like Bernie said, if we bring you in again, that's a victory because someone likes you, someone has said yes. And that is the thing. Along the journey are yeses. Mm -hmm. The big yes is the booking, but they're little yeses. If I'm working on something else, I bring you in, right? If I'm talking to Jensen or I'm talking to Bernie and I know they're casting someone like, hey, see this person, you know? Everything is a victory because those yeses mean something. Mm -hmm. And it's only a matter of time before that big yes, yes. happens. Yeah, yes. and I have a good story about um, about what you were talking about too, just about the like getting called in regularly for a mm -hmm. TV show, for example. I have a friend who's here in this mm -hmm. room okay. who came in and auditioned for a TV show we were working on called The Path, and um, kept coming in and kept coming in, and it was like one line, three lines, two lines, you know, and just you know we kept bringing her in because the team kept expressing interest, but wouldn't you know just never pulled the trigger. And finally, we brought her in for another role that ended up being like a recurring role. Mm. So that one paid off even more than mm -hmm. like than the one or two liner would have paid nice. off because then she just kept coming. She just kept getting called to do the recurring. The recurring. Yeah. So yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you mentioned that number fifteen hundred. That's a lot of self tapes. Yeah. So I want to go back to. Agents. What if someone an actor has does not have a very good agent? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you work with certain agents that have people that they said, you know, do you look at and certain not very good ones too? What's do. that? And and not very good yeah. ones too. No, I know. No, I don't those, those fancy ones. No, what I'm saying is because I know That's a lot of actors are frustrated are. about this part too. It's like yeah. I have a crappy agent. They'll say, yeah. and they don't know if their tapes are actually like you know will. Bernie or Erica, or Erica, look at mine, or will they look at, you know, if they have to mm -hmm. do 1,500, will mm -hmm. they look at, you know, this big agent that we sort of know? Mm -hmm. 
I just want to ask you a question like that because uh, actors ask me that all the time. Like saying, looking I, at a tape from an you, agent that we know less, or yeah, yeah. Will you look at it? Oh, yeah. Well, if I request something, I yeah. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything that comes I I, in, if yeah. I request it, then I yeah. look at it for sure. It doesn't yeah. matter where it's yeah. coming from. If I, if, it, if I make the request, then it's then I'm going to look at if, it. If you if you if yeah. you, then that's why I'm, I think that's yeah. what we're saying about the opportunity. If yeah. there is an opportunity, there is a shot of you getting yeah. that job because yeah. our job is to watch those tapes. Right. You know, so like when I was doing uh, that damn Michael Che, I had 30 roles per episode. So if you multiply that by 50 like you know so I was I was banking in at least a thousand tapes per week that I was watching and that was on the low end but I was watching each and every single one of those tapes because that is my job yeah you know your your job is to put down those self tapes yeah, my job someone is, to is watch watching them. it on the casting you know? team someone yeah and you know we, we, that's that's the job. So I think when we request it, it doesn't matter who it is. You're you're gonna have you're gonna have that that shot at it. Yeah. No, because I know people have asked me that. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. No one was requested to come in or send a tape, but yeah. you know. We don't want to waste well, anybody's time. If you're if you're no, a slut, but, yeah. it, so we don't want to waste anybody's yeah, time. Totally. Like that's yeah, like yeah. We, don't, we don't we're not time wasters. <laughs> and like your your yeah. job is to audition yeah. and put the, in the tape, and our job is to watch. And if we request it, it's because we are we're trying to do our job. We're yeah. doing our job, and we want to see your tape. Yeah. I think that what the probably the bigger question, or what it sounds like from yeah, the actor, is more about the feedback and not right. getting feedback and like feeling like you're just sending things into a void, and then. And, and or that's, is it going to go on? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going to happen? It's like, well, I didn't hear anything, which again speaks to this different time that we're in, right? Because like when you would come in in person, at least you saw a person, like mm -hmm. you saw a human being. Mm -hmm. If you didn't hear something, yeah. you kind of just. So, knew. Well, now they all said the actors would say like, "Oh, I'm looking forward to the days of coming in and just reading the room and knowing I didn't get the job." <laughs> You know, because yeah. I had all these actors at my theater, and they're in there, and I'd be in the dressing rooms as right. artistic director, and I'm like, and they're complaining about the self tape, and I was trying to, yeah. you know, look at both let both sides, and they're like, you know, I would live for the day where you all were just rude, and they're, you know, and the, te <laughs> and the team didn't, you know, exactly. So yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, I, and I get it, but then they don't. But I'm like, but it was surprising to me that these are working actors, and they were like. I know I got the request, but were you doing that to be nice? And I'm like, no. I mean, my boy, my boyfriend's like, an actor. I was like, no. Someone is watching the tape. We asked you to do. Yeah. it. We didn't ask you to audition no. for Sweeney Todd. No, my Todd. boyfriend's an actor, and he's always just like, no. they're just doing this to fill a quota. I'm like, what quota? I know. That's what I mean. Uh, like, so I don't want a quota. We have to break that myth of like you just said. If it's been requested, yeah. someone on the creative yeah. team in the casting office yeah. is watching it. Yeah. That, you know. And if you don't no. hear anything, huh. it simply is the same as if you came into the audition. Yeah. And, and didn't hear anything, yeah. you know. So it's just, it is really the same thing. Somebody's watching, and then because we're watching a thousand tapes, we can't say anything. No. I, can't, like, I would say, no. do you want to call for me at four in the morning? I know, my, like, no. My whole entire day would just be like, just yeah. telling people, oh, I'm sorry, we went another way. Yeah. Which is like the worst thing. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't like yeah. being in the harbor. I think the communication, ask, yeah. they also, you know, because I was literally asking every question every night at, in the dressing rooms. And, like, <laughs> You know, the thing. I think it's also, they, I, I think we get, you understand why you can't get the feedback, right? Because of everything that was just said. Yeah. But I, I understand that, like, not knowing, you, the actor needs to know that the door is shut. Yeah. And mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. And I don't, you know, like, it's been cast. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because yeah. sometimes because they were living at the theater, they're like, any feedback yet? I was like, no, because they <laughs> have, you know, grandly, yeah. you did the tape a week ago, but our creative team is going to take three weeks to watch yeah. everything. Yeah. You know, so that was helpful information because they don't know, oh, so it's still in the running. And I'd be like, yes, it's still in the running. But I get that, you know, the agents do know when it's over, like when it's been cast. Right. Or and whether or not yeah. that, you know, so I get it's a little wanky. But yeah. You know, but I, you know, it's it's all, like, what is it? Uh, what the good news quote? Like the no news or like no, no news, news is, is good, good news. news. Yeah. You know, because sometimes sometimes we have to give feedback. You right. know, yeah. if oh, something yeah, went yeah. wrong. Yeah. You know, and yeah. maybe someone wasn't as kind uh, in the room as they should be, or things right. like that. Then then we or on set, I had to unfortunately call an agent because something went down on set, and I had to give that feedback. So sometimes, you know. You're doing the right thing, and that's that's the feedback. Is you're doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah. If you okay. keep getting yeah. called, then that's that's also that's, that's, that's the feedback. feedback, and that's what I was saying. Called, yeah. That's the feedback. That's the feedback. Yeah. You're talking about 
on being on the set and maybe not behaving well. Yeah. Social media has become such a part of our world. Sure. I'm not on it a lot, but everybody's on this. Everyone has opinions. Everybody has political opinions. Let's talk about like actors, like when you cast somebody, whatever else. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, how does social media play in sometime? How does a person's social media play into a casting sometimes? I've. Uh I've never been in a predicament unless when I was working on a show, we were specifically looking for a social media influencer. Like that was as if we were looking for someone who could be an Argentine tango dancer, right? Like we were specifically looking for that skill. Yeah. Um, other than that, there is, for me personally, there has not been a project or a role in which followers made a difference, in which, you know, whatever that is made a difference. You know, if there's person A and person B and this person and everything's the same and person A has three million followers and this person has zero followers, I've never been in a predicament of being like, oh, so let's go with this. I think, yes, there are projects that are like that. I wouldn't say that they're not. Um, I haven't worked on projects like that. Um, I've worked on, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I yield my time yeah. to these lovely people, but that's that's my take is I haven't, uh, I think there, why I use social media, and I think we use social media as research, mm -hmm. you know? Um, there are some questions that we're not allowed to ask. Um, but social media comes into play with those questions a lot. It's like, oh, who's mom, who's dad? And I like to see, you know, who actors are outside of the acting. Like who, you know, oh, she has a dog. Oh, she went to Puerto Rico last week. Like, <laughs> you know, like I, just to get a good sense of you, who you are because it's such a personality game. Um, so that's how I use social media. Um, and if I can't, if you don't have a rep and I need to contact you, um, that's always a way. And I think, you know, having some sort of something to contact you, be it an Instagram, um, be it a website, it doesn't have to be fancy, uh, just a way to contact you. That's the most, especially if you're just getting out of school, you know, or you're just starting in this career and there, you don't maybe not have representation, our job is to find you and our job is to contact you. So if we can't contact you, then that's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I always say check all the spam. If you're an actor, check your spam folders, check your update folders, check your promotions folder, check, you know, every folder because there is a chance that we're trying to get a hold of you. And I know many, many actors who have gotten requests that just have never seen them because they get lost in folders. Right. Um, so always check your folders. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, if you, yeah. if you don't follow someone, there's that requests. If you just check that, there might be a casting director in there just being mm -hmm. like, hey, I saw you on a show. I saw you last night or whatever it is. Would love to see you. Because um, you just never know who's trying to request you. Mm -hmm. And you might get, uh, that, that might get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. But I've been on, some, I've been on a few projects where um, I'll have a producer say, uh, who, how many, you know, can you check, how many followers do they have on yeah. Instagram? And, you know, and that happened a couple, that happened on a play on, on a Broadway show that I was working on where we weren't necessarily casting big stars. And mm -hmm. so the people that we were casting, it seemed important to the producer that we know, like, if they had follow, like, who, how many people were following them. And um, so that's happened. And, and, and then on some TV show, a couple of TV shows I've worked on, there's been that question of, how many followers does that person have and who are they on social media? Oh, I know them because I see them on social media. You know, like I'll hear that from, from yeah. somebody um, and like, oh yeah, let's cast that person because they, they've done this. Sometimes it can be like kind of like a funny, stunty kind of thing too. It's like this person has some kind of social media presence and so we want them on the show um, for that reason. Um, I don't want to say this and then have you all go out and like suddenly like become like obsessed with your social media though because I don't want that to be like the thing you think is going to get you the job. I think that there are people who have like special skills that they show off on social media, mm -hmm. like special interests that can be useful and beneficial. Um, uh, but I also I, I I don't like to promote this idea that oh my gosh, you have to have a huge social media presence, otherwise Correct. you're not gonna work. Um, so please don't take away, take, don't right. take that message. Right. It's just like, you know, you will work with people who, where that's important to them. Um, you know, I don't wanna generalize. I think sometimes no. when I work with people who are in LA, sometimes. Yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think we've yeah. learned yeah. to, because again, we have to remember it's a business. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a business. That's yeah. what so when I, and we ask that question a lot on projects about how many followers, mm -hmm. And I'll, you know, do my little acting and innocently or I'll go like, 
why is that curious? Right. Um, <laughs> it, oh, are we doing something? You know, like I'll try to, so that it doesn't just become a habit, like I, I want them or her or him because he or she has more. You know, I'll go, is that part of this thing? You know, I know why they're asking, but like be specific. Like is, yeah. is that really helping the non-star who's mm -hmm. in the Broadway play? You know what I mean? So I get them asking and then we try to have a conversation about, but I think your first part of the social media was, so forget about the follower part from a business, but yes, you need it, it's your, it's your tool. I mean, we go on it, especially when we're doing dancing. You know, we see yes. dance, then you just cast a movie, and it was like we got to see more auditions that were on, not more auditions, but more types of this person's dance on mm -hmm. their social media than we would have right. if we were able to track them down and ask for a dance reel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are your tool. That doesn't mean you should all be doing 100 monologues on your, yes. on your Instagram page, but it's a tool that we will use, like both of them have said, and look for. I think you use the words political. I think, this may be just my opinion, but I think, you know, because it's a tool that we're all using, uh. you have to just know that you're in an industry that everything about you is gonna be looked at and used. Mm -hmm. And I do think sometimes, and that doesn't mean you can't be a human and be political and be an activist and all of those wonderful things, but there's a time and place, and nowadays I feel like so many people that I cast for are asking us to check what their, you know, being is like, what their behavior is like, what their yeah. personality is like. It's no longer just about being a great actor. No. Mm -hmm. You know, are they trouble? Are and they I don't trouble? like, yeah. you know, and I'm famous, not famous, but I'm really, like, we're very forward of like, you know, because everyone says every the bad thing about social media, everybody has an opinion about everyone. You know what I mean? And you have to just be careful because nobody wants an alarmist in their company and nobody wants someone who's too much. And, you know, we spend a lot of time trying to separate that from the work and, you know, it just gets complicated. So I feel like you have to be careful. I no, I mean, I sense, you know. I was working on a show, and this was um, about 10 years ago. No, not less than that, but a, a while ago. And um, uh, someone had a test deal. Ooh. Someone had a test deal, and uh, they retweeted something their boyfriend said. And the producer saw it, yeah. and the producer took away the test deal. And so that person had to write a letter to the producer, had to write a letter of apology to the network, and a letter of apology to the, to the studio um, over something that their boyfriend said, but that they retweeted. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Big Brother's always watching, and, <laughs> you know, sometimes your opinion doesn't align with someone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. And that could be a conversation. Yeah. Or not be a conversation, actually. Yeah. Got it. What is the best way to build a relationship with casting, with, I, with any of you, and stay in contact with you without pushing too hard? I think what I usually say to people when they say, like, how do I stay in touch, or what do I say, yeah. or things like that, I usually put the question back on you. And I say, if there was a budding actor who saw you and whatever you were doing and wanted to maybe be mentored by you or maybe wanted to just talk to you and send you an email, how would you want that person to email you? How would you want that person to contact you? What I usually say is, you know, be um, focused, specific, and concise. There's a reason why you're contacting us, so what is that reason? You know, um, hey Eric, I see that you are casting this. I think I would be great because yeah, here are my I materials. Yeah. Please let me know if you have any questions. Now, I think it goes with that feedback question. I try to answer every single email that comes across my desk. Yes. I do, um, just because I have been in that situation of being 19, 20 and wanting those answers and having my emails go on unanswered. So I try to answer every single email that comes across that book across my inbox. But I think sometimes that reply comes in that in, a, in an audition. So I might not reply to you, but you might get an audition. Mm -hmm. That might happen tomorrow. That might happen in three three days, it might happen in three months. Um, but I think as long as there's something that is update, and an update doesn't necessarily have to be a booking. It can be something of a pin, of a callback. I got new headshots, I got a new reel. Um, I moved to LA, I moved to New York, I moved to Atlanta. Whatever it is, um, I think that is the best way. And making it personal, I think we all get emails where we know we're BCC'd. No tea, no shade, 
and eliminate. I'm not mad. However, I think Hey Erica goes a long way. Yeah. You can copy and paste, but just Hey Erica just goes a long way because then it's like, oh, I'm being thought of as a person, not just on a listserv. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know it's a long time. I get it. Um, but yeah, I think just as long as I know why you're contacting me, especially if I'm looking for something very specific, and you can be that unicorn, please contact me. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking for someone who speaks a specific language, has a specific skill, mm -hmm. you know, and that is you, please let me know. And but let me know, you know, hey, and even if we know each other, yeah. I might not know that you have this skill. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, I met you at the SAC After Foundation. I just want to let you know that I do this. I see that you're casting this. Mm -hmm. Would love to be considered. You know, I think that goes a long way. Yeah. Love those kind of emails. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. The, the really specific um, emails yeah. um, because you are aware that I'm casting something yeah. that mm -hmm. you're right for mm -hmm. or that you want to be seen for um, and you meet these special skills that we have listed. Um, I, I always appreciate that. Um, you know, my email address is out in the world. It's not, yeah. you yeah. know, it's, I'm very accessible. Um, I'm not, I'm probably not always going to reply to the hi, how are you? Right, um, right, email. Yeah. right, <laughs> right. You know, um, it's 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 not, um, un, because I just don't have the, the time. Yeah. But it's the why. But it's the why, yeah. Like I, I, and and like Erica said, my what I'm what I'll do um, instead is if you have something specific, you want to be seen for something. I've had, you know, like I've had a few people, like I mentioned um, Hudson Valley Shakespeare. Like I've had a few people email me directly requesting an audition. Instead of responding, I just send them the audition. Right. You know, so that's the response. You know, so and it's gr and it's actually been great. Like when that happens, because again, like you're saying, because if I don't remember someone. You know, or maybe they didn't get submitted by their agent, mm -hmm. or maybe they didn't, or maybe they don't have an agent, yeah. and they but they have access to the breakdowns and they see something and they want to be seen for it. It's perfect because then, like, great, I can yeah. see you. Um, and they're, you know, I sing, I do this, I do that, and you know, you just weren't on my mind at the moment when these right. auditions went out. So this is perfect timing. So thank you for reaching out. Now you've got an audition um, for this. Um, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, um, and, and if you have something going on, if you want to invite me to something, it doesn't mean that I will be able to make it, right. but I don't mind that kind of communication at yeah. all. That's at all. totally, yeah, that's That's great. your job. That's and your I'll, job. And even if yeah. you're repped, I feel like you, yeah. I know I've oh some my agents, God, yes. some agents and managers would, you know, shoot me in the foot, but I think <laughs> it's your, it's your, yep. um, journey it's your uh, job you know it's your career that's the word I'm trying to get yeah. it's your career and I would rather bring you in because I know you yeah. versus a recommendation from your rep so I think it's very important you know to send those emails you're not going to be blacklisted you're not going to be you're not bothering anyone I think a lot of people are afraid of emailing people if you do have the, if like my email is out there too it's like if you get the email that is your job the yeah. worst thing that can happen is you don't get a response yeah. you right. know or or maybe that role is not for you, but maybe their role is roll down the line for you. Yeah. Um, so definitely shoot your shot. You got it. Yeah. And yeah. I would only say the only thing uh, I'm not different than Erica, I won't respond. <laughs> <laughs> but I use that as an example of all that means, she just said it, yeah. all that means is I didn't respond. Yeah. 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 But I read it. Yeah. And, you know, many times I pass it to one of the 30 people in the office who yeah. are casting that project that I'm not even casting and like, Oh, I like her. Oh, right. I saw this. Right. Right. Oh, I told her to write here. Mm -hmm. Or I don't do it. But, but then again, response. you did your job. You got in front of. But they all get opened. They all get looked at. Yeah. Because I'm, I'll wherever I am, I'll say, email me whenever you want. Because you're helping me remember. Yes. <laughs> you're helping me do the job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, it, you know. Yeah. And 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 if by not responding, all it means is not responding. It doesn't mean. I'm mad. It doesn't mean I'm, you know, <laughs> perturbed. It doesn't mean no. I don't like you. You know, like like those are the things that we say to ourselves as actors. But yeah, yeah. all it is is you didn't respond. Yeah, yeah and but don't. it was seen. Yeah, I don't. And I'm not. Also, like this is a, a, a dark room. I don't. I can't see everybody. If you email me. Uh, I might not even know who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you say, I saw you at the SAG. That's, that's a really wonderful introduction. Um, but again, as Bernie and Erica are both saying, it's not personal if I don't write you back. It's mm -hmm. just, this is great. I'm glad that you're introducing yourself to me. Um, but I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And this is a great introduction. So just, so, so yeah, this is, you know, we can start there. Yeah. You know, yeah. 
No, I love because I think a lot of actors say, oh, my God, if I actually email that person. Because, you know, yeah. everybody thinks that casting directors are the keeper of the, of the castle. Yeah. They do. That's what actors think. Yeah. You said this whole other group of people have to make the decision. Oh, my God. The producers, so many the people. directors, there's so many other people. For those one-liners we were talking about, yeah. there are about yeah. 20 people that got to say yes yeah. before that three, pe the three people that actually have to say yes. Including the network. Like, the network No, and I'm, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's it's, it's, it's a lot. And it takes three weeks for yeah. that to happen. <laughs> um, but what I usually say when people are like, I don't know if I should email, blah, yeah. blah, blah, I usually tell this story. Um, um, and the story goes like this. When I graduated from college, I was looking for a job because that's what you do when you graduate from college. You look for jobs. And and um, a friend of mine, who's still a dear friend of mine, who was my roommate at the time, found a job on our school's listserv of jobs that was a paid casting internship at ABC. And uh, in big, bold letters, it said, do not apply unless you're a student. I had already graduated. And at the time, I was a little different than what I am now. Um, and I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to apply. I'm not going to do that. And my friend was like, Erica, it's a paid internship, which back in the day was not a thing. Um, she was like, Erica, it's paid. It's full time. You got to apply. But I was like, but Joe, in big, bold letters, it says, don't apply unless you're a student. He's like, Erica, apply. So I applied. A couple days later, I get a call from this guy named Vince. And he says, so Erica, I see that you just applied. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. He puts me on the phone with John. John Ort, who at the time was the manager of casting at ABC. And John says, so Eric, I see that you graduated. You can't be an intern. I'm like, I'm so sorry. He was like, but do you want to be an assistant? <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I tell that story is I wouldn't be here if oh, yeah. I just told myself, don't do this. Right. And Joe, who is my dear friend and a producer for RuPaul's Drag Race, always tells me I made your career, <laughs> which is not wrong. But, um, uh, <laughs> But the reason I usually tell the story is, if you're the person to say no, you don't know what yes is behind yeah. that might have not been posted. There was no posting for an assistant job. There was no anything about an assistant job. They were going to, uh, I was going to say cast it. They were going to hire <laughs> internally. Someone they knew. But yeah. someone they knew. And I was and I was against someone that they knew. Yeah. But they decided that I was right for the job. Mm -hmm. So if I was the person to say no to that, I don't know where what would have happened. Um, so all always shoot your shot. That's why I'm a huge proponent mm -hmm. of people shooting your shot, because I did. And look what happened. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. So my final question for all of you is, you've, you're all at the top of your game doing what you do best. You cast. What do you each love the most about what you continue to do, which is casting? Wow. Um. <laughs> oh, me? me? You go first. <laughs> Uh, okay, I know, I was being polite. Uh, and there's so many things, but you, did you just say the last part of the question again? What we love about it? What you love the most. Oh, I, you know, <laughs> the unknown. I mean, mm. it's like, I, you know, been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. I get emotional, but Aww. I love going to work, mm. and I love the idea of being part of something creative, and Find, you know, it's like doing the crossword puzzles that I couldn't do mm. because I wasn't an intellectual and I wasn't a word person, but I love being a people person and I love matchmaking, you know what I mean? And, mm. you know, all of those kinds of things of like, you know, giving people opportunities and working with actors. I just love what they are able to do. And I, you know, whether it be at my theater or whether it be in casting or whether it be with the casting staff, the idea of collaborating around what it is that you do and the craft mm -hmm. that you do is, to this day, thrilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sit in the movie theater or the theater every night and I'm just so excited for what is the unknown is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. It's still thrilling after mm -hmm. this long. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm. I, that was so beautifully put, and I feel the same way. I wouldn't have. I, I don't. I love the way you said that. So I don't. I can't. I, I don't want to steal yeah, from you. <laughs> what you said, um, because it's true. Like the when you're working on something and you're so deep in it, and and then to have you know when you walk into the theater and you see what it is, um, and you, you and it's just stunning and and beautiful, and to be a part of like this creative process in such a meaningful way um, has been uh, I've you know I've been I've I've been not I haven't been doing this as long as Bernie, but um, uh, but going on twenty something years, and it's been 
uh, a joy. It's been, you know, mostly a joy. Yeah, you're totally <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I that's just, a different I feel, panel. That's a, that's that's a different, a different panel. panel. No, I feel that's very. A session. No, I feel just <laughs> incredibly lucky to be right. uh, like up here. I mean, I can't yeah. sometimes. Like, it's so funny because I walked in today and I was like. What? <laughs> and every time I'm just like surprised, yeah. like, oh wow, I get to yeah. do this. Like, I still get to do this. It's kind of amazing. Um, and um, I love, I wouldn't, I have to say also, I don't think I would be here if I wasn't with my partners, James Calary and Paul Davis, who've been mm. so, um, who are just amazing people who do such an amazing job and are still so passionate about what they do too. And like the three of us together, I just feel like we are um, a great team and we've been through so much. And um, so I don't, you know, and they've been such a, um, they're, they inspire me all the time. And so I just I feel really fortunate. I and I love I love actors, you know, and I love mm. I love working with actors and I love working with directors and writers and yeah, what what Bernie said. <laughs> no, I mean I, I'm just here to to echo exactly what my two colleagues said. And I think, you know, for me, I always wanted to be in the entertainment industry. I got my first camera when I was nine. I started dancing when I was four. So like, I knew I was going to be in this somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, I wanted to be a detective. That's what I wanted to be. And I always feel that whatever you want it to be when you're seven, you find a way to do it. So I wanted to be a detective. And I think casting is oh the detective God, yes. of the entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, so always hold on to your seven-year-old self. Um, um, and I was at a reading recently, and I can't say what it was, but I was just sitting in a room, and I just had to, like, those moments of where you're like, where am, like, what am I doing? Like, am I allowed to be here? And they're like, and we're going to go around and talk and introduce ourselves. And I was like, I'm going to introduce myself with that person in the room? Okay. Um, uh, so just just realizing that, you know, never you it never gets never old, gets you know? And you all are the superheroes. You all are the reason why we're here and why it makes the job so fascinating and so fresh and so new and so exciting, you know? When we're, you know, it's midnight and we're still trying to get someone to answer an email, you know, it's like those choices. And you know that role shoots tomorrow, right. you know? Like, it shoots tomorrow. Can we get the choice? And then you get the call from your showrunner and being like, just letting you know, so-and-so was a delight. Yeah. They were so amazing. And the best call is like, you know what? I know we were going to have them in only two episodes, but I see them yeah, yeah, for yeah, three yeah. more episodes. Right. Yeah. You know, like, that's, uh, that's, that's why we do it. Um, so that's always exciting. But like I was saying earlier, when you're in the room or even just get the call and being like, that's my person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that, that is why I do it. Or, you know, just getting a call from someone to be like, hey, like this was my first audition ever. Like, yeah. or this is my first time being a recur. Or, you know, I made my insurance because I got this job. Like mm -hmm. things like that. It's so, it's so refreshing. And when you're maybe on those days where it's like, oh, okay, am I going to get it? Then you get that email and it's like, no, that's why I do it. That's exactly <laughs> why I do it. Yeah. That is correct. Well, like I said, we have a room full of actors at every age. Yes. People I know this from schools here today. You're just graduated or you're starting your careers. People who have careers, people who are continuing their careers, and people watching all around the world. I want to thank the three of you for doing this today. Thank you. Great. Let's hear it for Erica Hart, Erica Jensen, Kelsey.